Well, I believe we have a guest, Tom Fitton with Judicial Watch, that's going to join us now here on Salem News Channel. Tom, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate the work that you're doing there at Judicial Watch. And I just want to thank you uh, and ask you just from the get-go, uh, what are your thoughts? Obviously, you're watching uh, the polling places and the precincts. What can you report at this hour? Well, we have um, observers, uh, Judicial Watch observers. We have a uh, former DOJ senior official running our program there on the ground in Wisconsin. Uh, we don't like the way they've been counting the ballots, uh, at least the absentee ballots. It's a little bit haphazard and not terribly professional. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, th that's another key state that kind of has floating, been floating down the middle, uh, not only in this election, but in prior presidential elections. You know, but, you know, you're, you're seeing the numbers probably more directly than I am. Uh, from afar here. And what we see building here is the most significant political comeback in American history. And, uh, you know, in retrospect, you know, presuming the numbers keep on going the way they're going and, and Trump takes it, you know, I thought it occurred to me that Kamala Harris seemed to know she was losing a few weeks ago when she and her allies started talking in this extremist way about Trump being Hitler and fascist, you know that's those are that's a campaign. That type of language, or, or you know, however inspiring it might be to motivating to their base, that's that's a campaign that's failing, and uh, and we're seeing that argument fail tonight across the country in rather remarkable ways. It wasn't even working in Virginia, uh, where uh, Democrats have been increasingly strong. Uh, government workers live there, certainly in the northern part of the state. It's been increasingly liberal. And, you know, Trump was overperforming in Virginia. I know you guys called it for, for Harris, but uh, Trump came pretty close. Um, and he may, he may still take it yet. Tom, if we can, let's bring up the, uh, the graphics right now. We have the map to take a look at what we have, the structure of the Senate. If you could see our screen right now, you can see that there is a gain of two for Republicans and a loss of two, obviously, then for the Democrats, with 50 seats going to the Republicans and 39 for the Democrats. Of course, a third of the Senate is always up for grabs. Uh, and in this case, the Democrats had many more seats to lose. So this was, of course, a bigger risk for them. And, and the way it looks for the Republicans, there might be some nice gains. But of course, at this point, uh, I know that the Republicans were hoping for a 53-54 victory, but all it takes is 51, or if the presidency is Republican, all it takes is 50 with a tiebreaker from the vice president. Yeah, it certainly looks like the Republicans will get uh, the Senate, uh, and it's increasingly looking like they'll retain power in the House, again, which would just be a remarkable turnaround. Uh, you know, Republicans generally were nervous about losing the House. The Senate was seen as more of a sure thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, in my view, as a conservative and, and Judicial Watch is an anti-corruption watchdog group, you know, concerned about the rule of law, you know, if, if Trump does end up winning, he has a powerful mandate uh, to take on the corruption here in Washington, D.C., uh, secure the border, restore the rule of law and immigration. And, uh, you know, and Congress needs to... Uh, get cooking when it comes to curtailing government spending, really, that's been causing so much of the inflation that Americans are concerned about. Uh, it's Katie bar the door in terms of public policy uh, changes for conservative values. And the other big victory is in Florida, at least from my perspective, where uh, the radical pro-abortion constitutional provision or amendment they were trying to push failed. And, uh, you know, babies, unborn babies with a heartbeat are now going to be, are still going to be protected in Florida after Ron DeSantis uh, took a leadership role in e exposing the extremist approach on abortion that the left was trying to push through in Florida. Major, major victory there. Jeff and Tom, if I may just jump in with one more question quickly. Uh, Tom, you talk about the mandate that President Trump would have and in winning potentially both the uh, House and the Senate if President Trump does pull through and, and end up winning tonight. When he won in 2016, there was uh, there was a lot of uh, there were a number of people, even in his own party, who didn't want this outsider. And when there were accusations of Russia, 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 
Even the Republicans seemed reticent to support Trump at that point. Many abandoned him and said, oh, let the, let the investigation take its course. And Trump was sort of, he was sort of handcuffed in the beginning of his presidency. He was taken away from him. He even said he deserves to have a couple of years back because he didn't really get to govern as, as any other president in the past got to. Do you think things are going to be dramatically different this time out if the Republicans win the House and the Senate and that these are people who came up or are coming about uh, supporting Trump as opposed to being reticent to support him? Well, you raise a fair question. We don't want to get too irrationally exuberant. Uh, if you're a conservative, usually what happens in Washington will generally continue to happen. So I'm sure I'll have some internal pushback from uh, some nervous Republicans. But a lot of Republicans who were, uh, you know, so quick to abandon him or pretend uh, that uh, he was up to no good, uh, you know, they, I think, politically regret their position. And uh, hopefully they will rather than worry about what Trump is doing, worrying about, worry more about the abuse of power uh, that victimized Trump and other Americans uh, during the Biden years and frankly during the Obama years. Tom, I want to ask you, I know that you are all over the place uh, making sure that the law is being followed. Judicial Watch has just such an amazing uh, staff there that, that follows everything. And I know that you're on top of this. There was some electoral college reform under Biden. And the way that they certify the electoral college now, it kind of concerns me a little bit that it goes through the governors. When we have six out of the seven swing states are all Democratic governors. We have uh, Governor Whitmer in Michigan. We have Governor Shapiro in Pennsylvania. And they have called Trump a Nazi and a fascist. I mean, if it comes down to them certifying it for Trump, can you trust that they're going to do it after they've said that this is a Nazi and a fascist? I mean, I'm sure that you're watching this. And how seriously are you looking at that? Well, the establishment Democrats in the last few weeks have kind of walked back some of their more extremist colleagues or walked back away from some of the views of their more extremist colleagues and said, well, we're going to we're going to certify any election that Trump uh, wins. And there's no there's no argument he won improperly or he will have won improperly, presuming he does win uh, in this election. So there's no basis. And frankly, to the degree that Electoral College Reform Act undermines state legislative prerogatives in the elections as the Constitution uh, directs, um, I would argue there are some constitutional issues there. Uh, but, but I do think, uh, on the other hand, there's going to be signif significant pressure, and that's going to be the big question. What is the radicalized left that's been so empowered in the last few years, kind of, uh, uh, you know, they took the violent riots in 2020, they got the major Democratic Party leaders to endorse and defend and excuse it. What are they going to do if Trump wins? And that's generally the concern. And I'm hoping that the victory is significant enough if it does occur. It's not because I have a political interest in it. I just don't want the violence to occur and rioting to occur and the left to have a justification for it. Uh, so uh, the bigger the victory, the better for the public safety and civil discourse. All right, Tom Fitton from Judicial Watch, thank you so much on this busy election night for joining us. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you, gentlemen.